when a plant grows in the soil, the way that it creates all of its structure, and in fact, all of the structure in your body is made of minerals. Now, in nature, when a plant grows in the soil, it grows and then at some point it dies and it decomposes and all of its mineral content goes back into the soil. But we, mm. in our infinite wisdom, we cultivate. We grow plants in soil and we take it away from where it grew and we eat it over there or we feed it to an animal. And that soil, when it's been cultivated like that for hundreds and in some cases thousands of years, that soil becomes extremely depleted of minerals. Now, you could say, well, wait, why don't we just throw some minerals back in that soil? But like your body, the replenishment system for minerals into plants is very complex. And you can't just put rocks and shells and bones into the soil and expect the plant to be able to utilize it. The same way you can't put rocks and shells and bones into your body and expect your body to know what to do with most of it. You see? Yeah, yeah, so, that makes sense. So they say that to get the same nutrition from an apple, and we have we have studies that show this, if, and we could put that in the show notes, the link to it. So because people often ask me, is that really true? And just so you know, I mean, I totally support people who want to do food as medicine. I agree. Yes. Food is medicine. And that's why I say plant-based minerals are food. <laughs> they are yeah. food as medicine, okay? They're not labs formulated supplements. Okay. So, right. so what we, so I'm sorry, I lost my train. I was thinking, I was talking about, oh, I was talking about why when you eat an apple today, or excuse me, if your grandfather ate an apple today, you'd have to eat like six apples to get the same amount of nutrition. It's that big of a problem. I'm telling you in the 1930s, they had a whole session of con of Congress about the problem of mineral depletion in the soils. And what have we done since then? Nothing. Because they cannot figure out how to, they can get nitrates, they can get, you know, all sorts of other things back in the soil, but bioavailable nutrition is hard. Even in regenerative farms, I mean, and I, and I want to go back to this concept because I think this is, I don't want people to miss the importance of what you just said. So mm -hmm. I can tell you from our own gardening, uh, I live mm -hmm. in California, we've gone through a lot of droughts. And so over the last couple of years, my husband and I decided to pull out all the grass and to do vegetable bin, uh, gardens. And one of the vegetable gardens has a artichoke plant. And my husband is a protector of the environment. He knows a ton about regenerative soil. And so when this artichoke plant would die, he would say to me, just leave it. And I was saying, you know, it looks so ugly. It's in our front yard. And he's like, just leave it. And so we have continued to let this plant die and go into the soil. And then we don't do anything other than deal with how ugly it looks in front of our house. And then each year it grows back stronger and stronger and bigger and it tastes better. So there's mm -hmm. a classic example to me of a little microcosm of regenerative care for your garden. What I hear you saying is that conventional gar farming, you grow a crop and then you get rid of the crop, you till the crop. And now after you've tilled the crop, you have dead soil. Nothing mm -hmm. was allowed to go back in and then you grow the next broccoli or you grow the next so so we from the model that you just said we're pr it's pretty clear if you're eating food from a conventional farm it is nutrient absent there's it's just it's it, it's not giving you what you need but what about if i go to a regenerative farm do we have any signs that that type of farming is giving us the mineral punch that we need well it's definitely better but it's still not enough. And again, this is just the simple reality of when you grow in that soil and you take most of that plant away and you eat it somewhere else, yes, some of the plant material ends up going back in, but it's not the whole thing. The other thing is that to create like humic and fulvic. So what we've, we know about uh, mycelium. So mycelium are these organisms or fungi that live underneath the soil and they deliver nutrients to the roots of plants. And do you know what they deliver? They deliver fulvic and humic. 
packets mm. of fulvic and humic. So there's this process of decomposition of freshwater plants. And in that decomposition process, there's some specific microbes in a particular sequence of events that happen that turn into humic and fulvic. If you see a pond and it's a brown, that's actually freshwater plants decomposing and becoming humic, okay? okay? And this is what happens in a compost pile. Now, the problem is most compost people leave doesn't get broken down enough. 